Well, the Penguins are now in Toronto, and that's where we're going to be for a long period of time. And they hope very long. It could be their longest road trip ever if they stay there and go five series. That would also be a first to win a Stanley Cup. First up, though, is a preseason game, exhibition game, whatever you're going to call it. That's Tuesday against the Philadelphia Flyers. So, Chris, I'll start with you on this one. How would you approach this if you're Mike Sullivan, specific to goalies and also your roster? How many guys would you let play in that game, knowing that it's the Flyers, knowing that they've had a history? And what kind of game do you expect? As far as the goalies go, I would still give Matt Murray the net and see what happens because I feel like Tristan Jari's performance was good enough and Sullivan has shown a willingness to kind of roll the dice with a mostly untested goaltender, relatively speaking, like he did with Murray in 2016 in the playoffs. If he needs to go to Jari because Murray gives up five goals in this exhibition game, so be it. But that's how I'd handle that. As far as playing any other stars, though, man, wouldn't you like to say that everybody involved here is going to play this like a get our sea legs under the under us and get ready for the real stuff that matters but in reality it's the flyers and though they're not a goon squad anymore they're still the flyers i wouldn't be shocked at all if some guys were taking runs at crosby and malkin and players like that so i would be hyper vigilant hyper cautious and really think hard if i were mike sullivan about whether or not i wanted to ice my best players for this game you know what i make this easy simple and short i play matt murray and net i don't play my top six forwards that's it uh, not against this team i think they're they're getting their legs under them will happen with montreal it's a beatable team even if it goes four games they'll be able to they'll be able to figure things out i actually like the fact that they're playing in that this first round uh, i would not play anyone against the flyers i want to see what the younger guys have but i do want to see what matt murray can do so i would play him in that well i think they're going to split their goaltenders i think it's the best way to go and i also think you're going to see everyone maybe not crosby because he hasn't but i think you're going to see everybody and you'll play a lot of guys, uh, you can control their minutes and all that stuff. But I think Mike Sullivan is going to do it. Now, let's talk about when this playoff begins. Rich, it's a best of five. It begins on Saturday. All 8 p.m. games, by the way, which tells you how popular Montreal and Pittsburgh is. But it's essentially, can a hot goaltender beat a far more talented team? If you're Montreal, do you believe that's how it has to happen? And can Carey Price do that? He's not the same Carey Price. Yeah, he's not the same Carey Price, I don't think. You know what? I honestly think that from reading everything from Montreal, we're not up there, but it doesn't even seem like they're really into this, uh, the Canadians. I mean, uh, they, were, they, they could have potentially had the, the first overall pick, right? Um, so I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think that they're into I, I don't think the Pens are going to win in three. I think it's going to go four games, but I think the Pens are going to be pretty dominant in this one. They got a really good uh, offensive attack. Uh, Carey Price, he's not the same Carey Price that he was how many years ago. And, and the Canadians, they're just not a really good team. They shouldn't even be here at this point. Okay, they shouldn't be here, but how many times have the Penguins had a first-round opponent in the actual playoffs where we've said, oh, the Penguins really should outclass this team. Hold on, i got to search my memory banks. Guys. Last year? Oh, yeah, Islanders. I can go back to last year <laughs> when the Islanders rolled in here. Everyone thought, myself included, that the Penguins are going to dust them in five or six at the absolute max, and we all know what happened. The Penguins' biggest enemy in series like this is not the opponent, it's themselves. So if I were Montreal, I'd cross my fingers, I would hope Carey Price, the good version, shows up, and I would try to rope-a-dope the Penguins and counterattack them when they make mistakes because if you play a packed-in style long enough, Chris Letang can say things all he wants in, in the media. Oh, we're going to do this. We're going to do that. We're going to be patient. You let the Penguins just sit there long enough and play boring hockey, eventually they will want to break out and start making it fun, and that's when opponents can get them. You look uh, at we the saw defenses. two of those plays, by the way, of Chris Letang in this scrimmages that we've seen, giveaways right in the middle of the transition in the uh, neutral zone that led to uh, goals the other way. So that's a dangerous thing, plus Claude Julien knows how to do it. Rich, I want to ask you about uh, the Penguins' power play, because for the first time ever, at least this season it seems, it'll be together, healthy and together. Throughout the season, they've not had Crosby at times, Malkin at times, Gensel was gone. How potent can it be, and will it be the reason they go deep into this tournament? Well, it could be, and it should be. You would think this, is the, this should be the best power play in the NHL, right? Uh, it should be, but it never is. Um, they're in the middle of the pack right now. Yes, they didn't have guys there for stretches of time. Crosby was hurt. Obviously, Malkin missed some games. Uh, Jake Gensel missed some games. And the problem with power plays like this is you, 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 there's too many. They get too fancy. Too many people try to score. And I think that when you have too many stars out there, sometimes we've seen it in the past that it could hurt you. But it should be a lethal power play. And we know in the postseason, um, if you have a good power play, 
you're going to go pretty far in the playoffs. Well, I think it comes down to two words for this Penguins power play, and it's a little bit of what Rich said there. Historically, sometimes you'll see them languish when they should, by personnel who are on the ice, be great. It's about role definition. You could have like a star-studded basketball team. I know our Pittsburgh viewers here will love a basketball reference, especially pro basketball. Uh, but if you don't have a point guard, if you don't have everybody sort of knowing, hey, this is what I'm supposed to do, this is my role on this team, and for the power play, it's this is my role on this power play, you're going to get muddled, you're going to get guys trying to make perfect plays, and you're going to end up not having success. If they have a, an idea of what they are, what their identity is going to be with the man advantage, then the talent should take over. But All we right. know that that doesn't always happen. Chris, you're now, exactly right. Uh, you talk about a point guard. The point guard for this power play is Chris Letang, and the guy loses his mind half the time. He's still very good at it, and I love him out there. Now it's time to go around the horn with this week's Smooth Moves, brought to you by Pittsburgh's largest supplier of the smoothest granite marble and quartz countertops anywhere. Armina Stone. Guys, make it quick. Your smooth move. Rich, you first. Well, I'm going to go with Derek Shelton. Gets his first ever win as a manager. He posted a nice picture on Twitter holding up the lineup car. So congrats to him. And that's my smooth move of the night. Derek Shelton times two here, but my smooth move for him is very smoothly pulling up that mask so he could go yell at the umpire. That is how arguments go in the COVID <laughs> world. Thank you, Derek Shelton, for setting kind of an example for managers throughout the league. All right, Smooth Moves brought to you by Armina Stone, Pittsburgh's largest supplier of the smoothest granite, marble, quartz you will find anywhere. Check them out at Armina Stone. When we come back, we're going to check out the NFL. Training camps are ready to roll next.